Welcome to episode 34 of Behind the Frame. Now, for those of you who haven't watched the series before, what we do is we take images that were captured out in the field, share some moments behind the sighting. I talk through why I captured the image when I did and with the settings that I did. And then I take the image through an editing process in Lightroom. And this week, we're going to be traveling to South Africa's Sabi Sabi Private Game Reserve and sharing the details of an image of a male lion standing on top of a riverbank. Here we go. Right, so silhouettes in wildlife photography are very popular, especially when there's beautiful, dramatic, saturated, contrasty, orange, pink clouds in the background. And there's nothing better than having a leopard or a lion or an elephant or some sort of charismatic animal in silhouette against a beautiful sky. And today I'm going to be sharing a moment from a, a safari that we were conducting in the Sabi Sabi Private Game Reserve last year during lockdown. Um, it was with all of our guides and we had an incredible moment where We'd spent the afternoon with some lions, late afternoon, getting there when we thought they would be most active. And sure as nuts, they got up and started to walk. They dropped down into a riverbed. We knew that they were going to go across there. There was water on the other side. We anticipated their movement, got down into the riverbed, had them walk straight onto us. And then they popped up the other side. And this was late in the dry season. The sun had already kind of just gone below the horizon. There was a lot of smoke from fires in the area and it gave the sky a really beautiful color. And um, what happened next was fairly unexpected and uh, managed to grab one or two little shots in between. I'm gonna share some of the sighting with you guys now as I share some video footage from the Atomus, which I used to record the scene. And you can see here, um, we've got the male line. You see the tracking of the EOS R6 um, locking straight onto that high point of contrast. You'll see that there are three lines here. In total, there were actually four. Um, the challenge here is that at no point up until now, still nothing there, you can see that with a silhouette, you're losing all the detail of these lines. You can't quite work out that the lion on the right-hand side is even there. He looks like he's merging with the bush. And the, up until this point, watch now when he turns his head slightly, that is the moment. That's the profile that we're looking for. Unfortunately, he looked to the right. And when he starts to move off to the left here, watch what happens kind of doesn't ever walk straight over and then all of a sudden he starts to merge and before you know it his belly is merging with the horizon line so a tricky scene lots of potential was i able to grab something out of it well i think i was but i want to show you a couple of the frames from that clip just to give you an idea of what i'm talking about and how difficult it be it can be and how to choose the right frame out of that sequence so if I have a look here, this um, is a selection of three images from the frame. And a cool feature that you can use here in Lightroom is if you select these three frames and you hit N, it takes you into survey mode. Now, I've already selected just these three frames for an example. But if you had 30 images from the sequence, you could do this with all 30 of those images. And then just based on the thumbnail alone, using N and the survey mode, you are then able to assign ratings, you can flag, you can reject. So if I wanted to drop one of these images out of the mix, I just simply click the X and it folds away um, and do the same thing there. And then I'm left with my hero shot, but I digress. So let's have a look at this. Um, you can see in this particular image, um, the, the male line has turned. You've got a kind of side on glance. You can see the profile. And if you look at it, even at a thumbnail level, you can work out that that is a male line. And this is very important when it comes to silhouettes is you've got to be able to easily identify and immediately identify the subject. So if you were to use an example of a giraffe on a horizon line, you need to have the legs in there. You need to have the belly in there. If it's standing just on the other side of the crest and you've lost half of the legs, it looks like a little stumpy giraffe. Or even worse, if it's further down behind the crest and you've just got a head sticking out, 
then it looks like a phone pole or something. So when it comes to silhouettes, you've got to be very, very selective of the frames that you choose and the moments that you capture. Um, you can see this male line off to the right here. You could, might not really be able to see, but you can just see a backside and a bit of tail. He's not even part of the frame. This is all about this guy. And if I have a look at it's kind of the images after this, this just looks awkward. I mean, at a thumbnail level, it, it could be, it looks like an ostrich with its head in the ground if you use your imagination, but you know, certainly not immediately obvious that it's a male line. Maybe if we've got the leg coming through here with a bit of a paw, it could work, but it's not the, the side-on profile which is immediately gonna say that is a male line. And then if I look at this next image, it's all kind of crippled and kind of jump bum bundled up into one frame and it doesn't quite work. So if I have a look at this, this is the frame that I'm going to be choosing as the hero shot. And as you can see, it's already been assigned four stars. Um, so this is the shot that we're going to work with. And um, there's a lot of potential in here. These skies, the, the, the drama in the scene is just fantastic. And if I have a look at some of the settings here, so this was shot on the EOS R6, and you could see that autofocus system working hard. So even when I panned the camera over just to kind of recompose if the subject was looking left or right, it locked on to focus onto that male line. Um, it didn't quite go for the eye, but obviously this is in a silhouette position, but you could see it utilized the point of highest contrast of this male line against that sky and it held it even when I was panning across left and right in low light. So talking about low light, um, this was taken on an 85mm 1.2 lens at f1.6 and ISO 1600. Now, 1.6, 85mm, and bearing in mind that the subject is quite far away, um, it's obviously not going to be too much of an issue in terms of depth of field. Lovely separation from the sky in the background, but you know, if the subject was a lot closer, I may have needed a little bit of extra depth of field, but in this very low, poor light conditions, um, just giving it a little bit extra from f1.2 to 1.6 was perfect. Also bearing in mind that the scale of this image is not about the detail, it's about the bigger picture. And as long as I get my focal point bang onto my subject, I'm going to be happy with that. In terms of the shutter speed then, 1 400th of a second, negating any movement, um, and then underexposing by one full stop. Again, you'll see that this is a bit of a thread for me, but I like the, the moody images. This is what the camera would have given us. But remember, I'm not interested in what's going on over here. And ideally, I would have liked it if this male line had crested and stood a little bit higher. But this is the part that's really going to draw the attention is the head here. So this is what the camera uh, has brought out as the raw file. And we are now going to start to take you through on a bit of an edit as to how I would process this image and get to the final image, which I will then share with you all at the end. So let's have a look. The first, first things first is to look at the crop on this. And um, I think you'll agree that the bushes on either side don't really add anything to the scene. Neither do does this male line over here com kind of complicates things. So um, I, immediately, because of the sense of the scale with the sky, I'm thinking that we need to do a, a portrait orientation on, on this frame, take out the backside of that other line, uh, and probably go for something along these lines line lines excuse the pun um, and something along that now what that's done is it's taken away the distracting elements of the bush the lines backside over there these two trees on the side here we could look to do an alternative landscape orientation and kind of cut that out um, and then include this now I must say that this would have been my preferred kind of scene however for me, the challenge here is that this male line is looking to the right. And typically, from a storytelling perspective, we want to give our subject space to look into. If he could have been looking to the left, I think this would have been my preferred orientation for the crop. Giving him space to look across here, balanced with this um, shrub on the side. But in this sense, he's looking over to the right. And this will probably be the image, the orientation that I'll use when generating the thumbnail for this post. However, I feel that the strongest composition here would be to look at a portrait orientation, putting him slightly off uh, center, giving him space to look into, and then maximizing the sky, which is really the kind of the part of the image that we really want to dial up when we go through the editing on this whole thing. So again, looking at the histogram, obviously underexposing, we've got a lot of room for whites. 
And we're going to just tease these out a little bit here. You can see we're lifting that, making these areas a little bit more bright and punchy. Definitely going to work on the saturation of the image. So if we go all the way up, it starts to get a little bit uh, too out of hand. So I'm going to go maybe about seven or nine here, maybe a touch more. I'm going to look at the vibrance as well. And you'll see that the vibrance is just going to start to lift those pinky kind of red tones in the image until we get to something along those lines, which looks quite nice. Come down to the tone curve and again, working the contrast in the tonal ranges, taking the lights and watch what happens here. This is where the image is really going to come alive. Now, we don't want to go too far, but I, I feel like we're going to maybe push this a touch more than what I usually would from a conservative processing side of things. And I'm also going to drop the shadows here. Now, you'll notice then that the, the foreground becomes quite dark, and that's fine. And if I switch on my blinkies or areas where I've lost details, so if I hit J, the shortcut for that, you'll see that those areas have lost details. See these areas highlighted in blue here? It says that we've lost detail in them. Do I really care about that at this stage? No, not at all, because in the greater scheme of things, I'm not showing that, sub that part of the subject. The story here is about a you know, far bigger scene than the, the details there, and increasing the contrast between those deep shadows and the beautiful bright skies is actually more in line with creating the story that we're looking for on this frame. So I'm going to hit J just to switch those off. I'm going to come down here to the detail, now, you can see here that we've got quite a bit of noise going on, and I'm not going to move the 100% preview for now because I want to show you what happens if you don't use the masking slider. So as I hold down the Alt key, everything that is white is going to be sharpened. Now, have a look at this. At this stage, um, there's a lot going on in that sky, and this is where people get very frustrated because if you're not masking out, and you are kind of just leaving Lightroom to sharpen everything here, especially on images with, that have been taken at higher ISOs where there is a bit of grain in there. If you're not masking, you're allowing Lightroom to take those edges of noise and sharpen it. And I remember when the 7D Mark II came out, um, everyone was saying, oh, it's just so noisy, so noisy. And I had a look at some of the way that they were processing the images and images that were taken at higher ISOs weren't being masked out. And so any grain and noise was actually being exaggerated through the sharpening of those edges. So masking out is very important on this one. We are going to hold down the Alt key and we're going to slide out and you'll see that we can get to a nice clean space where only those edges are going to be sharpened. We can then bump that up a touch and we can also apply a little bit of noise reduction, but I'm going to show you a trick coming up here soon enough. So let's have a quick look if we go back to our basic panel and before and after. And we've really done justice here. We've kind of really created lovely, rich colors, nice contrast, um, and a very nice mood and feel overall. What I am going to do, though, is I'm going to use a graduated filter, and I'm going to drop this down across the sky. So if I hit O for overlay, you'll see that the areas that are red are going to be worked. Um, any effect that I apply will be to 100% up to here fade to 50 over here, and then fade to zero over here. So I could even drag this down a touch. And what I'm going to do here, if I take the overlay off so that we can see what we're, how we're affecting the scene, is I'm just going to apply a little bit more noise reduction. So I'm going to lift that value up. I'm also going to drop the clarity and maybe just drop exposure just a touch here, just to darken that sky. And now, if I have a look at the before and after with the graduated filter here, you can see that it just darkens the top of the frame a little bit and accentuates the contrast down into the bottom of the frame. And what it will also have done is, in terms of the image quality, if we zoom into 100% here, there's the before, look at all that grain, versus this, which is going to be a lot softer. So what we've done with that graduated filter is kind of worked that top part of the frame, taken away any noise, softened it a little bit, and also just drop the exposure from the top of the frame just to create a, a bit of a balance. We've got a solid black underexposed section at the base, high contrast with our subject, and then just dropping exposure a little bit on the top of the frame to keep the frame a little bit more balanced. Again, as a before and after. So I hope that you have found this interesting. Really not that much in terms of the edits and no real need to go completely overboard on these. And you will find that a lot of my edits are 
kind of a little, little bit more conservative, if I, if I can put it that way. But I really am a fan of getting it right in camera, getting as close to the finished product in the camera as possible, and doing as little to change the scene um, as possible. Uh, this was a great moment. I really, really loved this afternoon. And um, I do wish that this male had kind of turned and maybe given us that side profile and given us a nice bit of a landscape type shot. But overall, love the finished product and love the story of this. If you guys have any questions about this image or any other images and that you would like to see featured on the Behind the Frame series, please do get in touch. My email address is andrew at wild-eye.co.za and uh, you can send me a mail, ask away. And also don't forget that there are opportunities to join me for one-on-one -on -one tuition. So if you'd like to find out more about that, you can find details at the bottom of this blog post. I hope you've enjoyed it and that you've learned something new and exciting for you to try when you do get out into the field next. Thanks a lot for joining me. We'll catch you next week on Behind the Frame. Ciao.